So for our next segment on probability, we're going to look at percents, fractions, and decimal. So I've drawn a line here, and let's say we're going on this line from 0 for a percent, we'll go to 100 percent. Fraction will go from 0 to 1 whole. For a decimal, we'll go from 0 to 1 whole. And if I were to divide each of these lines in half, For percent, that would be 50 percent. For a fraction, that would be one half. For a decimal, that would be 0 0.5. So over here at 0, we're looking at impossible. Over here at 1, 1, and 100 percent, we're looking at certain. Absolutely, positively, without a shadow of doubt, certain that that's gonna, that event is going to happen. Now, right here in the middle, we've got 50 percent. It could go either way, half and half, heads or tails. Okay, so this right here is called equally likely. Okay, and then if we divide it in half again, over here we're going to have unlikely, most likely over here on the right. For percent, that would be like above 75 percent. Unlikely would be less than 25 percent. That fraction would be one-fourth. This fraction would be three-fourths. This decimal would be 0 0.25, 25 hundredths. This decimal will be 75 hundredths. I'm going to add some color here. Impossible, it's a no-go. We're going to use red for that. And it's just for that zero right there. That's impossible. And then we'll use green in the middle for equally likely. And for unlikely, we use orange. And over here in between unlikely and equally likely, we've got this little segment. Means it could happen, but it's not as likely to happen. And over next to equally likely to the right of it, it's a little more likely to happen than unlikely. Anywhere from 50 to 75 percent. And here we've got most likely. Over here on the very, very end, we've got certain, right there. And if you will notice that these are the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, 
indigo, and violet too. So we've used the colors of the rainbow, the light spectrum, to learn about our probability. Red is impossible, orange is unlikely, green is equally likely, it's right there in the middle, most likely is indigo, violet is certain it's going to happen. So what I would like for you to do now, you've got a compass, and this is how you're going to use it. You're going to put your finger in here, and that holds it. And then you're going to put your pencil lead, or whatever it is that you've got. And theoretically, this is supposed to just rotate right around. It would help if my book were flat. It's not working quite as planned. Let's see if it works better over here. Nope. compass here and just kind of sketch some circles here. Okay, so what is the probability probability of my favorite color is the question and you've got five circles there that you've created so if these were spinners I want you to create the probability of your favorite color I want this one to be certain or label one of those five circles certain label we're certain. Certain is violet. Certain. Impossible is going to be red. We've got unlikely is orange. equally likely is green and then indigo is most likely okay so what I want you to do is to color these circles with the to create the probability of your favorite color so that means for the certain one, it's going to be entirely your favorite color. And then on impossible, your favorite color is not going to be there at all. And then on unlikely, and equally likely, and most likely, I want you to create the probabilities of getting your favorite color on those circles. So I'm going to stop the video here and make mine. And then you'll figure out what my favorite color is. So here I have colored my circles according to my favorite color. So you can tell by looking at this diagram that if the probability of my favorite color is certain, then my favorite color is Crayola's battery charged blue. Impossible, there's no battery charged blue on the circle, so the probability of getting that color on here is impossible. 
unlikely. I've got just this little bitty sliver of battery charged blue right here and the rest of it is a different color so it's very unlikely that I would get my favorite color on this circle, on that spinner. Equally likely it's 50-50 so half is battery charged blue, half is another color. Most likely the majority of the circle is colored battery charged blue and then we've got a little piece of another color would like to show you two vocabulary words that we just ran out of room on this previous page um, and I'm gonna have to put them on the next page because there's not really room on that one and the two vocabulary words are sample space and complement So if you've heard of those words, I would like you to fill in what you know about them. Pause the video, fill in what you know, and then when you're done completing what you know, resume the video, add any information that you need. So a sample space is the list of all possible outcomes for an event. And you will see that when you're dealing with compound events where you're dealing compound meaning you've got more than one event occurring in your probability experiment. Okay, you may see this Let's say um, we were rolling a die with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you may see it a coin going down here with heads or tails. And then it's like a, a table or a chart, if you want to call it. So we've got heads and 1 as a combination, heads and 2, heads and 3, heads and 4 heads in rule of five, heads in rule of six, or we could have tails in rule of one, tails in rule of two, tails in rule of three, tail in rule of four, tail rule of five, tail rule of six. You might see it as a table in that format. Or another option is a tree diagram. So what that would be is you would start with one of your events. Let's say I'm rolling the dice again here. So the possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From there, if I flip a coin, I've got a combination of heads with 1 and tails with 1. Heads with 2, tails with 2. Heads and tails with 3 heads or tails with four, heads or tails with five, and then heads or tails with six. Tree diagram. So that's a sample space, just a list of all the possible outcomes. There's also just a straight up list. So from the tree diagram, heads one, tails one, heads two, tails two, heads three, tails three, heads four, tails four, heads five, tails five, heads six, tails six. So there, there's a list. So that's the sample space, the possible outcomes. All right, then we've got the complement. And that might be new for you. Okay, so it's the opposite of an event happening. Okay, so it's the opposite of an event happening. So if we had the probability of rolling a three on a dice is one out of six, one number out of six are, is the number three, then the probability of not a three, that's the complement, is five 
over 6. You get that by subtracting 1 minus 1 sixth. That's all we have for today. Thanks for listening.